here's the boss guide to Tassadar. You're welcome. So, you want to play Tassadar like a boss? Well, my friend, you've come to the right place. However, first of all, you better make sure you know what you're getting yourself into when you pick Tassadar. This hero is harder to take down than a sumo wrestler after a buffet can shift into a whole nother dimension just to dodge enemy attacks and can turn into a raging ball of psionic energy to erase his opponents from the universe. Now, if you still think you can handle that, keep watching. Otherwise, just go play somebody else. Alright, starting off, let's go over Tassadar's skills and tips for them. Your first Q ability, Plasma Shield, shields a target ally for a tremendous amount for a short duration. It's one of the best shielding abilities in the game for protecting yourself or allies during fights, negating large amounts of damage. It's also great for adding durability to frontline minions or defending your team's towers and forts. Your second W ability, Psionic Storm, allows you to cast a storm that deals damage over time in a small area. This is an all-purpose ability that helps you add damage to fights, helps you harass, helps you soften up or pick off enemies, clear minion waves, and destroy enemy fortifications. Your third E ability, Dimensional Shift, makes you invisible and invincible for a short duration. It's amazing for dodging all kinds of incoming enemy attacks and abilities. You can also use it to escape from roots, walk through units blocking your path, or disengage and escape from the thick of a fight. Now your last and ultimate ability is Archon. We'll just be using this one for the build. Tassadar transforms into an Archon, instantly gaining a large shield and an increase in damage and splash damage for a short duration. This ultimate turns you into a significant tanky damage dealer that can soak up a lot of damage for your team or rain death on your opponents. It works best in team fights right after the enemy team has committed and initiated, because otherwise, they'll run when they see you turn Archon. Cause they know you about to drop the hurt! Your trait is Oracle. This ability greatly increases your field of vision and allows you to detect cloak units for a short duration. The increased field of vision can save you or your teammates from walking into an ambush and being able to see enemy movements before a fight or before an objective will allow your team to position and prepare better. And of course, the cloak detection will have you laughing at Novas and Zera tools who try to sneak up on you. Cloak? Psh, more like joke! Now on to talents and gameplay. Early game talents, at level 1, get Overload. The damage increase for your Psionic Storm is a strong boost to your best and only damage ability. This boost also allows you to start one-hitting Archer minions once you reach level 10, and one-hit all the minions in the later parts of the game. At level 4, go for Healing Ward. This is a strong area of effect heal that scales well throughout the entire game. It's great for healing up yourself or multiple allies outside of fights. And during fights, it can add durability and staying power to your entire team. You can also drop it on top of large minion waves during pushes to heal them up and increase their durability. At level 7, go for Static Charge. Anything that your storm hits, will be marked with a charge that is consumed by your basic attack and grants extra damage. This is a huge boost to your damage output, especially if you focus on attacking targets directly under your psionic storms, because the target will get charged again after each attack, as long as they are still under the storm. Now, on to early game gameplay. While you are laning in the early game, harass heavily. Try to hit the opponent and the enemy minions in one storm. This way you wear down your lane opponent and push your minions at the same time. If your opponent attacks or try to harass you, just shield yourself and start attacking them back until your shield runs out. You gotta teach them a lesson for trying to attack you! Because of your shield, you'll come out on top in most if not every trade in the early game. And between your auto attacks and storm, you should be keeping your opponent's health low. If they leave the lane to heal, push hard onto their towers, or roam to another lane if they could use some help. Also, you should use your oracle in lane every once in a while, or if you see enemies missing from the minimap. It can save you from getting picked off. However, if you do get jumped by roaming enemies while you are in lane, don't panic because you are very tough to take down. Simply shield yourself while running and use dimensional shift to dodge any slows, roots, or stuns coming at you. 
In the early game, try to be at every objective and fight that's more than three people, because you are a huge asset to your team in fights. Your oracle gives invaluable information about enemy movements and positioning. You can keep allies alive with your shield and dish out sustained return damage with storm and auto attacks. You can also heal groups of allies before, during, or after fights with your healing ward. During early game pushes, use healing ward and plasma shield on minions to increase durability and use your storm with statically charged auto attacks to raise down towers and enemy minions. Now onto mid game talents. At level 10, go for Archon. This ability turns Tassadar into one of the strongest characters in the game, albeit temporarily, but capable of going head on with nearly anything. Dragon Knight? Bring it! Golem? Psh! Odin? Ugh, so petty and tiny! As an Archon, you gain a large shield and your auto attack damage gets a boost as well as a splash effect. This ability is best during team fights and hard pushes to add tremendous damage, but you can also use Archon for the extra shielding to save yourself if you're under heavy fire or to turn yourself into a tank for your team. At level 13, get Distortion Beam. This grants your auto attack a significant slowing effect, which will keep enemies from running out of your storms quickly and thus taking more damage. The slow can also hinder enemies trying to escape from fights, allowing you and your allies to catch up and clean them up. Alright, now on to mid game gameplay. During mid game, team fights and objectives should be your priority. Use Oracle when approaching a fight or objective to scout the area for enemies and reveal their positioning. In team fights, shield your team's frontline fighter or whoever seems to be taking the most damage. If you don't have a warrior or a frontline fighter in a fight, you can become the tank. Simply shield yourself and go Archon. However, make sure you only use Archon after the fight is initiated or it's clear that the enemy team is committing to the fight. Otherwise, they can just run from you and wait until the Archon duration is over. Use Storm preferably on someone within auto attack range so you can attack them for the bonus damage from static charge. Drop your healing ward near your team on the outskirts of a fight or in a bush to provide some sustained healing for your team during the fight. Damage, tank, shield, and heal! Tassadar is so well-rounded on the battlefield, no wonder he rolls over his opponent so easily! When there are no team fights or objectives, you should be pushing enemy lanes or defending your own lanes. Lastly, remember to use Oracle often to scout enemy movements around you and avoid getting caught off guard or out of position. Now onto late game talents. At level 16, get Second Strike. This ability synergizes well with all your other upgrades to Psionic Storm because it allows you to cast a Second Storm for free right after you use Psionic Storm. Although the damage doesn't stack between the two storms, you can cast the second storm right as the first one is ending and double the duration and therefore the damage of the storm. This is a significant damage increase and allows you to cover team fights or minion waves in storms and melt enemy fortifications. Having two storms will also allow you to solo knights and giant mercenary camps a lot quicker. At level 20, get Twilight Archon. And this ain't your sparkly, wimpy, vampire kind of Twilight. Although your opponents might wish it was. This upgrade to your already powerful ultimate ability makes you absolutely ridiculous with more shield, more damage, and an unreal range increase to your attacks. As if you weren't already strong enough in Archon mode. Alright, now on to late game gameplay. In late game, you should prioritize roaming with your team to secure key objectives, mercenary camps, or golems. Use Oracle often, especially when coming up into enemy territory, around objectives, around important mercenary camps, or if you're just unsure of enemy movements, so that your enemies can't surprise ambush you or your team. No surprises for Tassadar! Not even birthday surprises! Scouting enemy movements and positioning, especially before fights and objectives, is crucial in late game. During team fights, use your shield often on whoever seems to be taking the most damage. Cover the fight in storms, but make sure to not stack storms right on top of each other since the damage doesn't stack. Keep an eye out for enemy abilities coming at you and dodge them with dimensional shift. Use Archon to bring the pain when the enemy has committed to the fight, if they get grouped up, or if you need the extra shield. Outside of roaming and fights, 
defend your lanes and do mercenary camps. And you should try to rally your team to go get golem camps. On the offensive outside of fights, push hard by healing up your lane minions and mercenaries with healing ward and of course melting enemy waves and defensives with your double psionic storms. You have the ability to turn large pushes into death balls that'll bulldoze over your opponent's bases because you bring so much damage and sustain in late game pushes. Alright, now that's it for this boss guide to Tassadar. Get out there, dazzle your team, and wreck your enemies because that's what boss Tassadar is all about. And on a real note, I hope you guys enjoy this video and find it both helpful and entertaining. If you like this one and want to see more, show some love by liking, commenting, maybe sharing your own success or failure stories with the guide, and of course, subscribing.